Ooh, this is an interesting map. So in the bottom side, playing as Valder once again, we have Psychoia. We've got Sneaky Dragon playing Tenry. Interesting. So I actually really like this map. I think it has a lot of interesting things going on with it. How about you? How do you feel about this map? Yeah, this map has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and like, there's a bunch of stuff that... There's a few things, if you don't know, you can get surprised by it. Um, there's a bunch of different approaches you can take to the map, which I think is a good thing. Um, and the CEO, the commanders that are good on this map are pretty different from usual. Like, Wolfar is actually a very good pick on this map because he can uh, groove a unit and like kill the barge that's on low HP and cut off reinforcements that way. Oh, right, yeah. Like, yeah, he definitely has some cool options. And, and there's just like so, there's like four very distinct fronts on this map as well, which I like. And like, there's a lot of use of like, why, I mean, we were just talking about thieves in the, the post game for game one. And this is definitely a map where thieves come into play. Yep. My hands rise. Are we gonna see? No, I thought you were gonna be like super turbo aggressive with a the sword there and like attack up in the top left, but. Nah, I mean, Sneaky's got two thieves out at this point. I'm not gonna capture more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Like at this point, like I can't really stop the thieves from uh, stealing, so I'm just not gonna capture stuff. <laughs> and yeah, a part of a big part of this map is actually flipping that hideout in the corner so that your economy is actually secure. Oh yeah, I've definitely played games where my opponent just kind of like left the hideout alone and I was just like, oh, you know, I'm just going to build a thief and have some fun here. <laughs> yeah, like you, you have to spend time dedicating to either covering that or knocking it down. And we're going to see Sneaky's going to take the long route and take the thief to the center hideout, it looks like. Yeah, you can't really go back uh, there. I guess. Yeah, there's a little bit too many swords covering that now. And I see you're just kind of going for the, I'm just going to use my commander to capture everything up here instead of uh, a thief. Yeah, Valder can, can snowball pretty hard here, and he kind of is right now. Yeah, Tenry's not pushing the issue down in the bottom right. But I guess, you know, like a Thief Steel came in, so that's pretty good too. Yeah. And if you look at the builds, um, I got a Dragon out, and... Oh, uh, yeah, I see it now. Mage yet. And because it takes some... And yeah, he builds the Mage right now. Because it takes some time to reinforce, um... Like, you really need to have a mage before the dragon gets built on this map. And so, Sneaky is gonna take some damage for that. Yeah, looks like it. Oh yeah, actually, yeah. These thieves are completely open to getting hit by this dragon, actually. There's like nothing that can defend them. Yeah, there should have been a mage much sooner. I guess, like, oh, actually, a thief could move back and then be within range of the mage, so. <laughs> Is it worth going for the trade, though? Okay, you decide not to, but I am curious if it's worth, like, t tanking a mage hit to kill a, a thief that has gold. Um, It might be worth if you value uh, the thief being dead. But here, I don't, I don't really value killing the thief itself, because there's another thief. 
and also because if I go for that, um, my dragon can get surrounded. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, yeah, a thief with gold is worth a thousand, so it's like about the amount of value you would lose with the dragon getting hit by a mage. Mm, I mean, it's definitely worth if you can kill the mage afterwards, but yeah. Yeah, that option is on the table, so... Just interesting to think about. But looking back at this game, Thief kind of moving into position to deposit next turn. But if you're, you're just going to let it happen. You're just like, yeah, I'll just move my dragon over to the right-hand side, knock a village down, put, put more pressure, get a knight crit in position as well. I like that too. Sneaky. Shoving this army in the top left back, actually, I think that's like really nice done with the uh, the knights there kill my commander here on turn 10 oh oh yeah i mean you get that passive heal so you're spending a lot less on your your heal the up the optimal opening <laughs> <laughs> i mean actually that is like what 45 50 health that you just passively recovered so yeah, it's pretty nice Okay. I mean, it's like 50 gold every turn, you know? I don't think... No, it's like 25, I think. But whatever, it's fine. Um, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sneaky's like finally stabilizing. He's got some mages out. But uh, I had a pretty big lead so far with like Valder... Uh, and the dragon. Yeah, so, and uh, now a thief of your own coming into action. And actually, you're going to deposit not that long after Sneaky gets his first one, so... That's working out quite well. I like the sword crit. Ooh, wow, leaves the sword on 1%. So some free Valder munchings right there, if he wants to <laughs> at some point. Wonder is Sneaky gonna I mean, run that onto the mountain to capture? Terms. That's that's groove. <laughs> oh wow, Sneaky's being really aggressive down the center line here. Puts a lot of yeah, pressure up on the... the This is the this is the I'm really behind, I have to kill the HQ push. Ah yes. And uh even using the the thief with with gold in it as a as a body into his push. Oh yeah, on a road in front of a dragon as well. Wow, that is a uh, thief probably is like I want a union <laughs> right now. Where's my union represent representative right now? I wish to make a complaint. <laughs> Don't want to be on a road in front of a dragon. <laughs> Okay, the uh, fight on the right hand side, yeah, it's continued to go your way. I think, oh wow, there's like literally, I mean, you could have just like smashed that mage with your knight and then just won the fight, but I don't think it matters that much. Yeah, actually, make, coming back to defend is probably the best play right now because it's the only way you're going to lose is if you leave your stronghold yeah. open. By my hands, rise. So... All Sequoia army coming back to the center line. Okay, there's like a few swords on the left hand side, but whatever. Okay. They're doing their job. <laughs> they are sneaky. Ooh, uses Tenry to get the first hit on the stronghold. It's actually a decent hit, like 36%. <laughs> Thief with gold comes in. Oh no. I mean, is... Thieves can be pretty funky, so like it's not a, a bad decision to use them into this push. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of surprised though there wasn't some kind of like I'm gonna flip this stronghold, not stronghold the uh, the the hideout. The, the hideout on the center and just like go for the the sneaky little uh, deposit there, but yeah, sneaky is really trying to kill the HQ here. And, uh, ooh. Yeah. Thief goes down. I think I'm, like, thinking about my defense here. And then... And then uh, recognizing you can just immediately end the game? Yep. Yeah, and then... Oh, I can win. There we go. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't spot it either. So that is, a, I mean, that's definitely a way to win. Is your opponent just forgets to defend their own stronghold? I mean, it is like an RNG uh, kill, but it's still pretty funny. That's. I mean, that I don't I think there was win. anything to stop the two turn lethal either. So. Yeah. Even if you didn't kill it that turn, like the mage hits your dragon and like the knight is like what? Nothing's gonna hit it, so it can just hit the stronghold next turn. Yep. So, uh, well played. Recognizing. I mean, obviously, well played for the rest of the game. You were quite clearly ahead at that point in time, but. <laughs> Let's take a look at these charts. <laughs> oh, bless me. Apologies to anybody watching the video. I tried to cover my nose as much as I could there. Um, oh, wow. I mean, you just got to look at that income chart. Yeah. That is... Uh, <laughs> very close to doubling at that point. I think, what, turn 9? You're like 1600 to 950? Okay, so it's like a 50% lead more than a, a double, but... It's, a, it's pretty good. It's army value ahead from turn 8 onwards. Combat unit, average count. Yeah, you were looking pretty good there. You got, what, 4 of all the grooves off that game as well? And Tenry didn't get full groove, so... That's, uh... Yeah, yeah the look... perfect Alder game, really. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's actually pretty much optimal the whole way. So, uh, yeah. Um... I think basically what happened is uh, Sneaky going double thief early uh, actually meant that he couldn't invest much into the army early on. And because of how hard Valder was going onto the villages, I could afford like a dragon really early. And I just kind of ran over everything with with the dragon. On the right, I had Valder taking care of the left. And yeah. yeah, Sneaky just didn't have the tools to deal with that dragon. Which is kind of ironic, really, but... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just a very a clean game from you, I have to say. And I think you're right. Like, And that's like something you need to keep in mind about Thieves. Is like You have to get value off of them very quickly if you build them early. Because otherwise your opponent builds a knight or a dragon or some other high cost unit and you just don't have the military on your side to deal with them. And then you did a really good job zoning the thief that stole the gold as well. Like it took a long time to deposit it. So it's a... Uh... Yeah, the main weakness of thieves is they don't fight. <laughs> yeah. Is, all right, they're a very interesting unit because of that. Yep. Alas. Uh, let's uh, let's go to game three. <laughs> 